This session is going to have a look at uh, data handling in both two dimensions, bivariate data handling and also one dimension, uh, histograms and so on. We'll also have a look at some probability distributions. So let's get out of this one and go to the 2D page. Now it's quite nice to introduce bivariate stats by just literally getting some points and throwing a few on. Not too many, just enough to make the point. Okay, let's select and select that lot. Now once we've selected these points, there are various things we can do. Let's have a look at the right-click options. Uh, the first one I'm going to settle on is best fit. It's quite nice to show that you can actually do a polynomial best fit up to order 6. And, uh, of course, it's a totally dynamic situation, which is nice. If you knew it was going to be a parabolic or even a straight-line fit, obviously double-click and you just change this. So we'll just select that and delete. So let's select these and right-click. This time I want to do a regression line. Now we're in the advanced level, which means you do get options like X and Y regression and Y and X regression. Um, in the standard level it just says line the best fit. So we do Y and X, which means X is the independent variable against Y. There it is, and of course if we move these points around, that happens. So now I've got these points selected, what I'd like to do also is to put on the mean, because I think it's quite instructive to show that the mean actually lies on the calculated regression line, and always does so. So whenever I see those uh, apps on the web for fitting uh, a random straight line through data and look at the least squares, uh, it's so much nicer if you can know for sure that that line is going to go through the mean, and then you've only got one degree of freedom for your second point. So what I'm going to do now is I've got all these points selected. I'm going to convert those to a data set. Here it is, convert to a data set. That means that they're now a single object. If I double click, I can see what I've actually done. These are the points I've put on the screen. But obviously that could have come out of Excel. So I'm going to put a point over here somewhere, it doesn't matter where. And I'm going to select that point and the mean. And right click, I'm going to do a straight line. This is giving me a random straight line through the mean. I need to remember where I've put it, sometimes that point can be a little hard to see. One little dodge is to right click, put a circle through it of uh, say point 0.1. Then I can see it more easily. Okay, uh, now what I want to do, I want to hide this because I don't want to see what the answer is, so I'm going to hide the object. So now I'm going to select the data and this random line. Now that I've got a line and some data selected, I get the residuals option. Now Y on X residual is the one we want, because we want X to be the independent variable. So again, get the pen out and look at this. What we actually mean is that all these differences between the actual data and the measured data is going to be in some cases positive and some cases negative. So we want a system for minimizing these lengths. Now the last time we did this with standard deviation we took the square root of the differences between the means and the values and uh, that's what we're going to do here. To get rid of the fact that some are plus and some are minus we're going to square each so we put a square on each one and then we're going to minimize those. Okay, so let's, uh, now we've got the idea of it, edit, select all scribbles, and delete. Okay, so I'm going to select that, and this, and right click, I'm going to do Y on X residuals. And I'm going to draw lines to start with, because I think that's quite instructive, to show that these are the things we're trying to minimise. But once you've got the idea, put squares on, and then if you select that, and go to the text box option, you can see what we've actually got on the screen, which is which is 11.65, for the sum of all these squares. So I can move this around and try and get that smaller, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1.9, 1.8, round about there. And once you've got that idea, let's just see what we've got on hide all and see how close we were. Not bad. So then you want to obviously deal with some real data. So let's go to the data set which comes off our website as well. And let's look at weights of babies. 
So it's quite a good um, data set this because it's uh, about 1100 babies from Stanford University in the States. And there they are, and if you have a look at it, there's, there's lots of the weights of the babies in pounds and kilograms, gestation days, mother's age, and so on. Um, let's take these two, which are next to each other, luckily. If they're not next to each other, you need to hide the ones in between. But birth, birth weight and gestation would seem to have something to do with each other, so I'm going to right-click and copy. Minimise that. So literally just drag from D to E and right-click copy, and that's what happens. That puts it all on the clipboard. And we're now going to do Enter XY Dataset. Right click, paste. In it goes. There's birth weight, there's gestation. Now these are column headers, so we want to use the X column header as the X axis label and the Y column header as the Y axis label. And um, let's just click OK. Perform water scale, I think we do want because we want the data to show on the screen. But if you've got your scales already set up, then obviously you untick that. And there it is. Um, but actually, if you think about it, the birth weight is the consequence of the long gestation. So I think these are the wrong way around. So double click, and there is the option to swap the axes. You can show the stats as well if you like, and uh, that's quite nice. So there you have your um, regression. Let's have a look and see. We want Y on X regression, which is just in there. And you can see from that that the correlation is 0.4, which is quite low. If you transfer that to the results box, Let's see what the results box is. Now, it lives over here, but if it's not there, you do view results box. And there it comes. So you've got different settings for the results box. You can either have it going, let's see this little pin. If the pin goes this way, it sort of interrupts. But if your pin goes this way, it floats on top of. That's probably the best one to have. And obviously, this is just text. You can drag it out. And you can just drag this and copy it and paste it into Word or wherever you like to put it. So that's bivariate stats. Now what about monovariable stats? So this is this page here which has single variable statistics, one variable along here, and up here goes frequency or probability. So once again we'll go back to the same data set and have a look at mother's age, which is a good one because that's a single variable. It's not particularly normal. It's got a skew at the top. I'm going to copy that, and that's copying column F. So what have we got here? We've got right-click. We've got enter groups data, which we don't want. That's if you happen to know the groups and the frequencies. Enter raw data, if you just know the raw numbers, which is what we have. Enter box plot. Enter probability distribution. That is something else. That's something to, to discuss later, the normal, the Poisson, and the binomial, and so on. So I'm going to right-click, enter raw data. Now this is where you can either paste it in, as we're doing now, there it all goes, or you can actually select one of these distributions and generate data from them, but we'll do that in a moment. Tick, tick, so I want the column headers to do work for me. It's quite interesting to sort by X just to see what we've got. So you can see we've got some young mums here, and at the other end you've got some older mums, and uh, up to age 45 in this particular sample. Click OK. Now, unlike the scatter diagram, the uh, frequency page doesn't draw anything because uh, it doesn't know what to do yet because there are several options. You've just got a bucket full of numbers. So the best thing to do is to draw a drop plot because that just throws them up um, in the spacing of one by default, but you can change all of that. Up and down is entirely uh, arbitrary, and we're just deciding that one uh, little block should equal one frequency. So that will, in fact, measure frequency straight away. There it goes. Now what we could do is right click and say box plot, but actually isn't it better to get the pen out? All the work we've been doing with the pen in the two dimensions environment, that works really well here too. So where's the medium? Where is the mother who can say there are as many mothers older as there are younger? Hmm, about there. Uh, where's the mother who is in the middle of this lot? And where's the mother in the middle of this lot? So what we're doing, we're generating a box plot by discussion. And that has the desired effect, of course, of making the students think, oh, well, come on, let's see how good we are. Let's look at the results. So you've achieved your aim, which is to get them curious, to press the right click and see what the answer is. Box plot, and there it goes. Raw data or groups, it's only raw data at the moment, so that's fine. Well, we did, didn't do too badly on the median, and the upper quartile, but the lower quartile was a mess. 
OK, so edit, select all scribbles and delete. Now, if you want to draw a histogram, how do we do it? Well, right click. We need to group the data. At the moment, there's nothing here about uh, group data because it isn't grouped. It's just raw data. Don't enter a brand new group data set. That's something else. Group data. So here we go. It's offering a 0 to 50 in classes of 5, which you can change, of course. But that's done some spade work, which is pretty good. Well, I'll buy that. Um, this is where you put in unequal class widths if you want to and certainly if you no need to work out the frequencies because that will do it all for you. Now if you want to calculate, you can calculate what the actual classes are going to be here which is handy and you can calculate what the actual frequencies are going to be. Again, that's handy. So that's a pretty good distribution so I'm happy with that but obviously if you wanted to change that to 10 you could do that and recalculate again. Now continuous or discrete, very important distinction. Age is a funny one because you are 30 until the moment you're 31. So it sort of behaves like a discrete, but actually, of course, it's a continuous variable. OK, off we go. Now, nothing's happened yet because, right click, all the options that require the data to be grouped are now here. So histograms, cumulative frequency, um, we've done those. But stem and leaf diagram, that's a mess with large data, so forget that one. Um, table of stats is obviously needing the data to be grouped. So let's have a look at histogram. Frequency or frequency density. Uh, there aren't many curricula around the world that, that do frequency density at sort of school age, but you know, those that do have to get involved in this. But for now, we'll just stick to frequency and then plot up. You could have it plotting down if you want to have two distributions. Draw a histogram is what we're doing. The frequency polygon sits on top of it and fill it up. Yep, let's do that. Now, the red tick comes to your aid here. And let's move that up. So we've now got our histogram based on continuous variable. So 20 to 21 starts at 20. If it was discrete, it would start at 19 and a half. And you can show that quite nicely by clicking this button, which is discrete plotting. And it'll just shunt half to the left. This uh, reading up here is the table of stats. And here it all is. Now it's quite good to sort of grab this and stick it into Excel just to show that it really does transfer very nicely. We'll go to the spreadsheet that we had open just now and open up a new page and right click, paste it in. And you can see that you've got all the information you want there, nicely in columns and all the sorts of that. Ah, uh, whenever that wakes up, it's worth exploring, seeing what it's doing. It can vary the class width dynamically, which is quite nice. So if the class width is 6, for example, this is going to get wider, so it's going to go up and down. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention on the results box, of course, I'm treating it as discrete data, and so it's going 0 to 4 and 5 to 9 and 10 to 9 to 10 to 14. If we made it continuous data and did the same thing, it goes 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, and so on. And expecting the actual value of 5 itself to be in here, but of course that value never exists because it's a zero width. Cumulative frequency is this one and it just plots automatically. You can have a curve fit or a linear fit. I always think that the integral of a set of blocks like this should be a linear fit, but there we are. Um, the convention is that a, a curve is drawn. It nearly always shoots off the top, so let's do the red tick to save ourselves going to find it. And uh, there it goes. Let's select that and right click to a cumulative frequency diagram measurement. And let's do the median. Now, what this does, it puts the median at the right place here, because that's easy to work out, half of the total. Uh, but this is just a random point which you have to move by I to where we want it to be. Now, that's interesting, because it looks as though the median, as measured this way, is completely different to this. And remember, the median here was measured from the raw data. So I'm now going to right-click, put on the box plot, but this time, grouped data. And it should, ha, look at that, perfect, uh, go on nicely. This little button here is quite nice. This view of the stats box. This compares the raw data stats to the grouped data, because grouped data is assuming they're all at the middle point. And so it's, it's quite an approximation. So you can see that the means are very different, standard deviations are different, and so on. If you want this picture to go into a Word document, uh, what you could do is uh, just cheer up the axes a bit. Uh, I think these are, these are too close, these lines here. So let's go to the axes control, which is the spanner. And here you get a chance to alter everything. So let's go 0 to 500. I think we probably don't need that. 
the uh, pips here I want to go in 500s not hundreds that's better uh, but also I think um, double click we want to put in some uh, option subdivisions of four that's looking good uh, what you could do of course is double click and just look at the appearance and choose a theme which is a graph paper that always does quite nicely and makes it look really good so I want to put that into word file uh, I'm just going to get rid of all this lot here which is axes don't show the key and it's a page so I want to copy that just move that away page and we copy page and the control C is the best one and open up a word page and right click paste and there it goes so that's a look at some of the stats for autograph and next we'll have a look at the problem.